Hello, welcome back! So maybe you have a child, you are a mum or a dad, and you're thinking about speaking English with your child. You're thinking about making your child bilingual. My kids are bilingual, although English is not my first language, so that's really interesting. And today I'm here to tell you a guide that I made up, a little list of 10 sentences that maybe as a parent, as a mum or a dad, you want to say to your kid in English, but you don't know how to say this because it's vocabulary that you don't know. I'm here to help you. Of course, this list is very general. People that want a very personalized service from me normally contact me privately and then we have a consultancy um, appointment or meeting to talk about this, okay? So this is a very general guide, but I hope that this could help you parent in some way or another to raise your kid in English. So let's get going. Sentence number one. I was thinking about when you have a little kid, this is for little children, okay? For babies and children aged um, three, up until, up until four, I think. My kid is four. I would say this is suited to zero until about four. Yes, you should be speaking to your kid even though your kid is two days old, okay? All right, sentence number one, it's morning, right? And you want to go get your kid. You want to say good morning. So in English, you say, rise and shine. Rise and shine, little one. Rise and shine, baby. Rise and shine, pumpkin. Of course, you can call your kid whatever you want. But little one is a very sweet way to call a baby or a little child in English, okay? Rise and shine. Sentence number two. Uh, the way I guided, the way I kind of organized my list is to show you that in English it works really well to ask questions to the child, although you are really telling them what you want them to do, okay? So in this case, um, supposedly you get your baby and your baby is really fussy, you know, they're like crying, and I don't know, like baby wants something, maybe baby wants milk. Can't talk today, so maybe baby wants milk. What you can say to your kid is, all right, all right, shall we get you some milk? Shall we get you some milk? Patricia, I'm not asking the baby a question. Yes, you're not really, but when you communicate this way to your baby or your toddler, toddler is a small little child, uh, two or three, you push them to talk back to you. And that's what you want to do when it's a bilingual kid, all right? So you say, all right, all right, shall we get you some milk? Number three, child is crying, child is tired, child is upset. You say, do you want to have a cuddle? Do you want to have a cuddle? This is a cuddle, a cuddle is like a little hug. Do you want to have a cuddle? So we don't say hug when it's just like, oh, you know, hugging them tight. We say cuddle when you talk about kids and when you talk about love in general, you know, you have a cuddle. It's a nice word to know. Very used for children. Number four, maybe your baby has got a pacifier, a dummy. It's a pacifier. This is the actual name for that thing that, you, you know, babies use. But we say dummy as well in the UK. So maybe your baby has got the dummy or the pacifier but you don't want them to be using this now because maybe your baby doesn't have this on when it's daytime. I don't know, like that, that was my reality, obviously. As I said, this is a very general list, okay? Uh, and you want the baby to not have it anymore. So we say, like, this is very tricky, but if you are Brazilian, <clears throat> like me, because then you're thinking, okay, so we take it out, take it out, right? Yeah. But it's a bit weird in English, we don't say it like that. So it's better if we say, okay, let's lose the dummy now. Let's lose the dummy now. Not lose like, where is the dummy? Oh my God, I lost the dummy, ah! No, just lose, not have it anymore. Let's lose the dummy now. It's so nice, isn't it? I bet you didn't know that that's how you're supposed to say it. You didn't know that, did you? Leave a comment down below. You had no idea about that. I know you didn't. Um, number five. When you talk about yourself, if you are a mother, okay, I'm talking to moms now because I'm a mom, and because it was Mother's Day in Brazil last Sunday, so. If you're a mom, you can call yourself mummy or mom, obviously, but mom, 
is not so used for babies because mum is more like when they are a little bit older, you know, like children, like older children. Um, or you can call yourself mama. So, talking in the third person, I don't know if you want to do that. I personally didn't really do that. Sometimes I do it. Sometimes I talk about myself in the third person with my kids, but it's not often. This is not my approach. But a lot of moms like to do that. So, um, it's time for your baby to go for a little sleep, for your child to go for a little sleep. You know, sometimes babies, sometimes, most of the time, hopefully, babies and toddlers sleep for a short time during the day. That's called a nap. Okay, a nap is a short sleep. So you say to them, Mama's going to put you down for a nap. Put you down for a nap. All right, Mama's going to put you down for a nap now. And then we have number six. Supposedly your baby dropped something on the floor, a toy or something, some food, whatever. And then you can say, remember, you are encouraging your child to speak to you in English. So you need to be able to do that by asking questions, right? So then we say, shall we pick it up? Shall we pick it up? You're not really talking about you and the baby. You're not really talking we, literally we. It's just a way of expressing yourself in English. It's super, absolutely fluent. Um, so I think this video is going to be very useful to a lot of people, not just moms and dads. Um, shall we pick it up? Okay, shall we pick it up? All right, shall we pick it up now? Hmm. Yeah, babies are very challenging, guys. Number seven, baby's crying, but you're cooking. Oh my God, you can't stop now. You're in the middle of making rice or a soup or something. So you just say, mama's gonna be with you in a minute. Mama's gonna be with you in a minute. Or I'm gonna be with you in a minute. All right, I'm coming, gonna be with you in a minute. Reassuring, that's very important for kids. Number eight, your child is not listening but you need your child to listen to you. You're the parent, right? So then you go down to the child's level and you say, I need you to listen to mommy. I need you to listen to mommy. Because listening, it's like, a lot of people ask me this question. How do I say um, this verb here in Portuguese? How do I say this in English to my kid? It's not very nice to say this verb in English. It sounds very strange. So we say listen. All right, listen to me. Listen to mommy now, please. Okay, it's important to know this one as a parent. Um, number nine, it's time for bed. Again, you're going to ask a question. Shall we get you ready for bed? Shall we get you ready for bed now? Shall we? Yeah? And then you encourage your child by saying, Maybe the, the baby or the toddler will just say, will just nod and go. And then you say, yes, mommy. Yes, mommy. Yes, please, mommy. Or sure, mommy. So you are encouraging the kid to talk back at you. When you talk about uh, bilingualism, it's very, there are so many complicated things about this because sometimes the kids are very reluctant to actually speaking. They don't want to speak. So you have to encourage this in lots of different ways, okay? And number 10, when you finally put them to bed, it's time to sleep. In English we say, night, night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Night, night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. See you in the morning. So I really hope this list has helped you parent to feel a little bit more encouraged and motivated to talk in English to your child. If you like this video, remember, click on like, leave a comment down below, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.